Hello everybody, it's Kirsty. You know me, I solve crimes using astrology. Today at the request of one of my lovely friends and subscribers, Miriam, we're going to have a look at Ted or Theodore Kaczynski or the Unabomber, which is this person right here. And we're also going to have a look at a poisoner. Now I've chosen um, if I can get his photo here, I've actually chosen Jim Jones. Now, although he's really more of a mass murderer, he poisoned or controlled people and their poisoning, um, which killed 900 people. So we're going to look at Jim Jones and the poisoning aspect, but we're going to look primarily at the Unibomber and see if there's any similarities or differences or what is going on with these two people. Miriam studies this uh, at Criminology and by all accounts people that use bombs, bombers and poisoners have similar traits and I can actually see that within the charts and within the astrology. So as you'll see here, bombs and bombers are ruled by Uranus and Mars and bombs and themselves, the atom bomb or the hydrogen bomb or any type of bomb is ruled by Pluto. The poisons, uh, poisons or poisoning is Neptune, the 12th house, Pisces, Mars and Pluto and because the Unibomber was a mathematician and extremely intelligent I just wanted to throw that in Saturn, Capricorn, Mercury and Virgo shows a mathematician so you'll get what I mean by that when, we, when I start talking about it so yes, we are going to have a look at the Unibomber and his chart, which is right here. So let's have a look. So this is the Unibomber's natal chart. It's very accurate. We have a double A rating, which means it's come from a birth certificate. Now. As I, I've read a fair bit about him now since first finding out that Miriam wanted to have a look at him and when I first opened up the chart I could see that this is an extremely intelligent person. We can see that because well firstly he has Uranus and the Sun at zero degrees of Gemini. Gemini is mercurial and intelligent. Um, Uranus is of high intelligence or genius level thinking. Then Saturn is also in Gemini. He's a Gemini rising. He has Mercury tightly conjunct the ascendant. So that's more Gemini and then Jupiter which enhances the Gemini. So this is one extremely intelligent person. Then we have a bunch of planets in the third house of logical thinking. Okay, so what do we see here that represents firstly that bombs were his thing. Now he mailed his bombs. So it's interesting. Bombs are represented by Pluto, like I said. And he mailed them, and mail is represented by the third house. Now Uranus is also a part of bombs, but it's the internal working of it. It's the, a water-cooled reactor, or the steam. It's... Um, it can be nuclear or biogerm warfare, all sorts of things like that. So Uranus is also, and because it's sudden, sudden, 
catastrophic events. Bombs and bombings can be related to that. So his high level of intelligence is what made him decide that sending bombs through the post and making, you know, he made bombs out of all just handy material left around because he could, because he was very smart. So we have Pluto in the third house, which is the bombs itself being mailed. So, you know, a pre predisposition to have to communicate um, in a big way, a very big way, an atomic way. And that is forming a sextile with Saturn, which is the physical body or death, the sun, which is his soul and his self-expression, and Uranus, which is that sudden impulse. So that explains that we have all of these planets touching each other. Now, he was a mathematician and a really good one. As you'll remember, that's represented by Mercury. Um, and it's also Capricorn, which is interestingly his eighth house cusp, which is the house of death. So take that as you will. Now here's Mars, which is anger and also related to bombing, is in the second house of self-worth and how he values himself. The closest aspect that it makes is a square to Venus. So that's relationships. Now, I have heard that in his manifesto, yeah, in his manifesto, he wrote about the fact... Uh, no, sorry, I apologise. Not in his manifesto. He yearned for a woman so much that he thought that maybe he would turn into a woman and nearly decided to do so, but then decided against it. So there's issues here with self-worth and with women. So I think we have a bit of a deep sort of trigger there. Obviously, as always, with psychology and this type of astrology, we've got to look to mum and dad as well. So here, if we take the sun and Saturn to be his father or any father figure, it's in the 12th house, which is hidden or unseen, so possibly absent or absent in his mind. The moon is the mother and the moon is in the third house in Leo. It's very likely, I'm um, not 100% on his childhood, but um, I've got some notes, let's have a look. Um, it's very likely that his mum was, um, well, a big, a big part of his life. Oh, here, he said he had never touched a woman so he dreamed of becoming a woman. He also said in his manifesto, like a phoenix, he'd burst through the ashes to a glorious new hope. But his mother is very integral in the way that he communicates, in the way that he communicates with other people around him and as he would have as a child as well. Now, he was thought of as a freak because he was so intelligent. And that can be shown there with Pluto, Chiron and the Moon in that third house. And all of that Gemini there around this area here. So, he was very interested in... Well, he had a disdain of technology and modern society. Interestingly, so did Jim Jones, the poisoner. Um, the manifesto that the Unibomber wrote was, well, extremely intelligent, actually. Uh, but I, I believe showed sort of his illness and how far his thinking went, um, but he used his brilliant mind to get his point across, but also to gain control.
he wanted to destroy progress and he had a skewed utopian vision didn't which is uranian uranus is very representative of the unibomber especially with the manifesto well, he specialized in boundary functions wrote five theses on that he wanted to convey his message and he had a disdain for technology the future of technology and all things uranus so writing was very important to him which is the third house he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote mailing the bombs is showed by this third house but what we also have is neptune so poisoning is neptune now but also insanity deception and having one foot off the planet basically one foot on the planet and one foot off is neptune now neptune is the leading planet in his chart as it is with jim jones which shows us with this square here from neptune in the fourth house so delusions that come from childhood or a trigger from an event in childhood and that is squaring mercury which is the mind and jupiter which is excessiveness and in the first house and the ascendant so how others saw him was intelligent highly intelligent yet strange which is this neptune and of course this very very pivotal prominent conjunction of the sun and uranus in gemini so the unibomber wanted to relay social justice through messages and that's quite third house as well but justice is librin or venus um, and we have venus up here in aries so that's we can relate that need for justice to be something that he'll take upon himself because of this aries it's i'll do that myself i i am now um the same scenario again with jim jones so social justice was an issue but with him it was an integration of the races that he wanted to be able to do he was ahead of his time and had a different type of utopian vision which is uranus so that's interesting but I'll, I'll discuss that when we look at his chart so the sun uranus and saturn these three planets here in gemini also gives it can give extreme nervousness erratic thoughts and would sort of force him to do the intelligent job so become the mathematician because of his own ego that that's that leo in this third house his ego is so strong he has a massive ego so it's why his um underlying desire was which is this 12th house the subconscious and what you actually dream of was to get off the grid and disappear from life and again the same with jim jones who wanted to get off the grid and form his own community the unibomber wanted to uh, leave humanity and go off into the wilderness and he did he went and lived in a cabin for a while and gave up everything that's shown by this 12th house here okay so let us have a look now at jim jones's chart and how we can see how pluto neptune mars and uranus and saturn and the sun all those these planets play a similar role with a completely different crime 
Here we have Jim Jones's natal chart. It's also a double A rating, which means it's extremely accurate. Now, this time he has Cap Jim Jones has Capricorn rising with its ruler Saturn, which is the authority and power and control over 900 people's lives. Basically, that's very. He was a very strong and controlling person. Now opposite that in the seventh house of other people there's Pluto and Jupiter. So his presence, his strong presence which was atomic in a sense was exacerbated by Jupiter as well. So these actually form a T-square, which is this half a red triangle, to Uranus here, which is in Aries. So that is very sudden incidents, sudden catastrophic incidences. And once again, it's in the third house. So amazingly, the things that he did so he has neptune neptune represents poisoning so he poisoned 900 people or got them to poison themselves neptune is in his eighth house of death it's forming a grand trine this big triangle to mercury in the fourth house so he could talk and communicate to the which is mercury to his family which is the fourth house, which that's where it sits, about what he believed in, and they would look up to him because it joins the ascendant, so that's his physical self. He, you know, they, they look up to him like God, like this authority figure, this Saturn here. So what's interesting is the T-square again, this red one, is pointing towards this third house. Now, Jim Jones also did some writing and wrote a essay type thing of the reason for the suicide. He, in fact, died by bullet, which is interesting because Mars rules guns and bullets and being shot, and that is on the eighth house cusp, the eighth house of death, in Leo. Now Mars in Leo is often shown in a psychopathic person's natal chart anyway. Um, so in the eighth house there represents that his death was well basically by his own hand with a gun because he was going to go out in his own terms. Everybody else being poisoned was his terms as well. So we have similarities with these with these planets, Pluto and Saturn being very strong here with this opposition. Jupiter involved, which amplifies the problem. Mars is making a square here to the sun. So there's anger and the sun in the fourth house is family and where one resides so there's anger that he can't reside and live in a community and a, this utopian lifestyle that he wants to live in even though the ends to what happened was absolutely shocking apparently initially becoming a preacher and everything else was enabled to help people and integrate races so that's Uranus so here we have that Uranus in the third house so amazingly between both charts of the Unibomber and Jim Jones we've got some similarities and it's not just similarities in terms of psychopathy but similarities in terms of the exact planets that are triggered or in a position that make these people do what they do. Looking at both charts together, we can see here is Jim Jones on this side and 
the Unibomber on this side. Um, there's a lot of activity in the third house in both of them. The moon is in the third house in both of them. The moon is are both in fire signs. Uranus is very pivotal in both charts as well. Um, Uranus being conjunct the Sun and Saturn in the Unibomber's chart in the 12th house really gives us a good sense of that what was going on with him, him subconsciously. Um, oh, I didn't mention either that uh, and I forgot that over here Jim Jones has Neptune as a leading planet as well. As you can see they've both got bunches of planets so there's very there's a bunch of empty areas here. Jim Jones has empty areas where it's concerning um, his feelings about groups and his visions and his career and his subconscious mind and and everything is this is all empty. Over here in the Unibomber, the empty side is all the where other people are. So Jim Jones has a connection between the first house and the seventh, so that's him and other people. So he brought other people into it, which was the, the community and which is what shows nine hundred poisons. Um but Ted basically was a loner and all of this emphasis in this area here shows that. So yeah it's interesting that both leading planets are Neptune. So Neptune represents poisoning like I said but it also represents delusion and not thinking right, you know, chemical imbalance. So they both have that as I said they both have their moon in fire in the third house. They both have, um, oh, I was going to say um, Mars in fire, but they don't actually. Uh, the Unabomber has his Mars in water. Now, the Unabomber's 11th house cusp, which is his vision for the future, the humanitarianism, the utopian vision, the how society may become that's in Pisces and Pisces can be depressive not as a blanket statement but so there's a depressive melancholy view about the future and these this utopian future that he has and the natural ruler of the 11th house is Uranus so that's in the mix there He's got restrictions in how he thinks the future should be. A bit more, I, I believe, a little, he's possibly a little bit more old fashioned or so forward in thinking that it didn't match with his psyche. Here, the lead in Jim Jones' chart being Neptune and being involved in this grand trine really primarily shows his ability to tell a whole bunch of people to do something suddenly and then do it and that happened to be taking poison which is Neptune related. So I hope that shows you a little bit about it. I can do another part, I can do a part two where we look at two more people. If you have anyone in particular Miriam apart from the Unibomber if there's any poisoners that you're interested in, please let me know. I know there's lots of them. Oh, and I'd like to, not to Miriam, sorry, but I'd like to also tell everybody that the, the rumour that poisoners are mostly female is in fact really only a rumour as far as I have learned. Women aren't the only poisoners, men do it a lot too. So. Thank you for watching and as always, take care. Bye.